Thank you, pigeon. What a nice pigeon. I would have overlooked that. John Prine's Fish and Whistle. This is like such a happy song. It's quickly become my kid's favorite song. I didn't really know this song. I heard it maybe a long time ago, kind of. I always have Prine shuffling. He randomly shows up in the playlist. But what a happy song this one is. Me and my kids loved singing it this week as I learned it and playing it a bunch. There's no intro video here. I'm going to link somewhere. I don't know how to do these fancy links. I'm not like one of these cool... I'm not PewDiePie cool, but somewhere maybe below, or I'll try to put it on the screen. Um, I've already, I covered this with my buddy Andrea. Check out his channel if you haven't. Um, so we did a fun cover of this song, so I'm not going to do a little demo here. But Fish and Whistle, here's a complete breakdown, finger picking. I'll throw tabs up there. I'm going to walk you guys through it. It's, it's, um, if you haven't finger picked before, it's too hard, right? Go to my playlist, um, beginner or Travis picking. Travis picking songs, I don't know. But that first song in the playlist, start there and go through them. If you've done a few of my tunes, if you've done any Towns Van Zandt or other John Prines, this one is not that, not super hard. Uh, to get it up to his tempo is hard, but you don't have to do that, right? So this is a cool one to learn. It's super happy and peppy. And even if you play it slow, it's still great. The chorus is easy, but this intro riff is just fantastic. And it's a really beautiful... It's just a great piece to study in terms of songwriting, right? It's just, again, the same freaking simple pattern. You got the G going to that C with the G in the bass, G and then a D with the F sharp in the bass. John Prime loves this, and you can abuse this and make an entire career out of songwriting. That is if you're super amazing at songwriting. So I don't know how you do that. The, 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 knowing the three chords is the trick. <laughs> the trick is the magic of the melody and the words. Uh... Anyway, we'll talk about that in another lesson. But here it is. I'm excited about this song. You should be excited about it too. It's a good song. The sun is out. It's springtime. It's forgiveness. For, it's forgiveness Sunday. It's something else I was going to say. But I got distracted. Something flashed on my screen. But anyways, let's do this song. Here we go. Mike's Music Method. First measure. Pretty cool. What's tricky is there's only this little hammer on at the beginning. That kind of will snag you because it's it's um it's not even an eighth note it's a sixteenth note so it's really quick. I am pinching six, three, and two, and keep in mind these these two fingers are almost always here on the second and the third string, middle on the second, and next on the third. So I'm pinching all those right thumb, six, three, and two all at the same time. But I'm quickly hammering on that third fret, right very quick. Then it's thumb on four, and then a quick and. Second string. So hammer, pinch six, three, two, thumb on four, and then and on the second string. So it's one, two, and hammer, two, and. And then we just end the measure with six, four, three with the index. Six, four, three, thumb, thumb, and three, four, and. So together, three, four. Second measure. So the first chord is a C chord with a G in the bass. So we've, we've done this a lot if you've watched any of these videos here. Right, C, C note there and then the E there. Second string fourth. But our ring finger stays on that G. Instead of playing like a normal C chord, it's still on the G. So we have, which is six, then I'm pinching two and three with index and middle. So six, two, three, then the thumb's on four. All right, that's one and two. And then we lift these two and go back to a G chord. And it's pinch, thumb alone, and then the and is on the second string with the middle finger. So the end of the measure is pinch, six, three, two. Thumb on four, and then and is index on the third string. Together we have that first chord. One, two, or sorry, one and two, three, four and three, four. And if we put those two measures together, three, four. And then I'll sing with it. I've been thinking lately about the Three, four. I've been 
Those are all at the same time. If you've seen videos before, I'm always about, you know, just taking the time to mentally note where the lyrics are happening in relationship to your fingers so you have those anchors to build upon. Three, four. I have been thinking lately about the people I meet. And I intentionally, when I'm practicing, make it staccato so it sticks in my head exactly where the lyrics are matching with the playing. And if you're annoyed and you're not a singer, then just, when I start to do the vocal part, just hit the, hit, what button is it? L. L will go forward 15 seconds. That might be too much. Or use your arrows if you're on the desktop. Forward arrow is five seconds. Back arrow is five seconds in reverse. A little keyboard shortcuts. It makes learning these so much better. K or a space bar. We'll pause it or play it. K, K. Play, pause. Space bar, space bar. Bing, 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 bing. Measure three is almost identical to measure two, except with a different ending. The last note is the second string instead of the third. That's the only difference. So C slash G to the G chord. Then it's thumb and, but the end is on the second string instead of the third. Fourth measure. We have a D chord with an F sharp in the bass, but we're really going to simplify this thing. All you really need here is the second fret on the third string. I'm going to use my ring finger. You don't have to. You can make it easier. And then you can use your thumb to play the F sharp on the sixth string. Again, the chord would be this, a normal D with the F sharp in the bass. But you don't need all these notes. He's really just playing that second fret on the sixth string and then the second fret on the third. That's it. Just those two. And the pattern is this. So the rhythm is one and two, pinch, four, one and two, three, four. So we just have six, three, four, is open, right? So it's just six, three, four, pinch, six and three, four, six, three, four, pinch, six and three, four. First four measures with the lyrics, two, three, four. I've been thinking lately about the people I meet Car wash on the corner and the hole in the street Father forgive us for what we must do You forgive us and we'll forgive you We'll forgive each other till we both turn blue Then we'll whistle and go fishing into heaven It's March 15th in the Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, New Calendar it's Forgiveness Sunday. How appropriate. This beautiful song about forgiveness. And, and this is the, the, you know, the coming weeks is what you should be thinking about. Even if you're not a Christian, that's okay. I'm not going to judge you. I won't, I promise. I'm not going to judge you. I might only preach to you a little bit once in a while. But not really. I haven't really done that yet. But I'm kind of going to do it now. Not really though. Am I, what am I doing now? Am I going to do it? I'm just going to say, think about, forgive someone. Not for no good reason, but like, think, you know, if you're harboring any hatred in your soul, in your heart, can you forgive them? That's it. Just think about it. That's all I wanted to say. And, and we'll continue. Enjoy the music lesson. Don't get annoyed. I promise I'm not, I'm not a preacher. It's just, I'm just trying to talk to you straight from my heart, okay? I'm done. Don't, don't get offended here at Mike's Music Minute. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Or am I? No, I'm not. Let's keep going with the lesson. We're going to fast forward through measure five because it's the same as measure one. <laughs> I think I played it wrong, but yeah, it's the same as measure one. And then we've got the C slash G, like in measure two. So now I'm on measure six. But we actually don't lift the chord up. It never resolves to the G, so he stays on it longer. So we've got six, then we're pinching two and three. Four. Do you guys hear that? No, it stopped. My cat has a cold. If anyone knows what to do about a cat that has a cold, let me know. The thing just like, I don't know if you've ever heard a cat sneeze, but it's not like an achoo. It's like a weird several sneezes in one. <laughs> so if you got any tips, comment below. What do you do with a cat that has a cold? 
so it doesn't sneeze in the middle of the night and wake you up. All right, measure six. Uh, six, two, and three. And my thumb's on four. Six, two, three, four. Then I'm pinching. Six, two, three. Then it's just four, three. So, uh, six, two, three, four. Then here you pinch all of them. And then it's just thumb on four. Here's five and six with a vocal. Two, three, four. The way my ankles hurt with shoes on my feet. Measure seven is a G. And then to that D, F sharp. And it's on the G, we have six, two, four, three. Six, two, four, three. Well, the lighting just got a dark cloud. There's a cloud over Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania right now. Uh, six, two, four, three, six, two, four, three. And then we go to the D chord with the F sharp in the bass, and it's just six, three, four, then three again, but you lift it so it's open. But you can lift your whole hand up, because we're going back to that next chord. So it's six, three, four, three, right? You can lift it there. You don't, don't put it in your pocket. I mean, you could if you wanted to. change but the tempo in the song is pretty quick so I, I don't recommend looking for loose change at that moment in the song maybe there's a may, <laughs> it's just not even funny sorry all right and then <laughs> so that's it cool little measure and then let's just go right to the next one or I'll explain it again one more time six two four three six three four three is open and then we hammer right back into the G Open the three really quick, right? It's like a 16th or 32nd note. Then the third string, thumb on the fourth. Six, three, four. And then I'm pinching six and two. Four, three. Pinch, four, three. Six, two is the pinch. So that whole last measure. Now for me, that was hard to get down. Like I was doing that hammer on a little too slow. So you want it to be very snappy. Because you still have the and, right? One and two. So instead of thinking of that as like another beat, we're, we're just very snappy, right? So it's one and two. I'm counting it as the same beat. One and two. Let's do measure five through eight with the vocal. Three, four. The way my ankles hurt with shoes on my feet. I'm wondering if I'm gonna see tomorrow. Time, let's just play it slow. You have the intro and the verse already done, right? It's the same thing. The beginning is exactly the same. He doesn't sing to it, and then he starts singing to it. Now, once in a while, there's a, a different last measure there at the end, so let's play through that now, but otherwise, you're doing great. This is like the coolest part of the song, except the tempo is very fast. Um, and, and you notice measure by measure that he's hitting different notes here and there. So to play it that quick and correct is kind of difficult. I admit when I did my cover, I don't know that I was hitting the, the right melody note every single time up top, right? You can get away with playing the middle instead of the index or the index instead of the middle. And no one knows the difference at that tempo. Um, but let's do that um, second ending here, which is measure nine. There's a bunch of different ways to do this here too. Um, I'm just playing a G chord, and it's six three, and then I'm strumming a D, and then a G. Oh, sorry, you don't want to hit the high note on that G. You could, but then play the full chord. Another thing I'm doing is I'm doing a six three. You can pinch the D. I'm pinching four two and three, and then on the G I'm pinching six two and three. For me, I'm already, we're already finger picking the whole tune, and I've got a lot of 
classical, not a lot of classical experience, but a decent amount. So it's easy for me to get those pinches in. So whatever works for you. Later on in the song, I wrote this measure in place of previous when going to chorus. It's really just slightly different. It's not a huge deal, but it's just six string third fret, right? So like a G chord, D chord, G chord. And then he finishes the thumb note on the fourth string. Still G, D, G, same idea. Again, this song, there are multiple guitars. So when we get to the chorus and even that part right there, like I don't know exactly what Prine is playing and what the other guitarist is playing. You know, there's a lot going on. So listen and determine what, what has the best feel for you, but just know that it's G, D, or sorry, G, D, G, and, and that's it. You've made it to the chorus, very easy. Uh, again, I'm not sure there's multiple guitars. One of them is definitely doing this. So let's talk about the rhythm here. If you think it's too weird to play it this way without a drummer and the rest of the band, you can finger pick it however you want, but it's a D chord. And I'm just doing thumb, thumb. So that's four, three. Then I'm pinching the first two strings, right? So we've been pinching the second and third the whole time. Now we're pinching the first two. So it's just four, three, pinch, four, three, pinch. That's the whole thing, right? On a D chord. One, two, and three, four, and. Right, there's two measures of it. Then it's a G, same idea, but different strings. Six, four, and then I'm pinching two and three. So I've moved up from one and two to two and three. Six, four, pinch, six. Then we go to a C chord. Same idea, but now it's five, four, pinch, two, and three. Only does one measure of that, so it just does it twice. And then to the G chord. Oh, there's a pigeon outside my window. You want to see it? Let's see if my cat, no, my cats don't see it. This would be amazing if I, nah, there's too much glare, you can't see it. Hello, pigeon. Sounds pretty, at least. Until they're cuckooing, cuckooing nonstop. But I don't have that problem. I don't think there's pigeons living here. All right, so we had, let's go from the beginning there. We had the D chord. To a G. Oh, sorry, my pinky's down on that G. Thank you, pigeon. What a nice pigeon. I would have overlooked that. That pigeon, I'm, I'm proud of that pigeon. Thank you, pigeon. Um, so I got the pinky down on the third fret of the second string. Seven. Here it's a little bit different. We have five. Oh, this doesn't make any sense. Did I write it wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So it's this cool A7. If you don't know this chord shape, it's brilliant. Let's learn it. So you play a regular A, right? Two, two, two. You got to do it with one finger, though. So if you're not used to that, this might be complicated. And then you're adding the third fret on the first string. So that's your flat seven. So sometimes you do an A like this, where that open third string is the G. That's what makes it a seven chord. It's an A chord with a G in it. But here you're putting the G up on top, so it's an A chord, but with a high G. And that shape's really cool because if you just play the top four, you know, now you can play every single seventh chord that there is. But I'll do it, we'll do chord theory another day. Now is not the day, a different day. Comment below if you want some chord theory fingerboard stuff. Happy to do those videos for you. But that's your A7. It doesn't really matter. I, you know, can use that middle finger. Sometimes I use my ring, which is kind of weird, but it just kind of depends how I'm feeling. All right, so that's our A7 shape, and we have thumb on five, three, five, three, one, with the middle finger, five, two, three, five, three, one, five, with, and two with the index. that pigeon that pigeon taught you that note in that chord thank the pigeon I'm a pretty good teacher but the pigeon deserves some some thanks I'm not at all funny today like some some I don't know if I'm ever funny but today I, I feel particularly stupid and unfunny but I'm keeping these in all right so then we go to a D now that we're totally lost and have no idea where we are in the pattern 
Uh, but this part's kind of cool. We're at the we're at the end of the chorus, and don't worry, we'll put it all together in a second. So we just have thumb, then he strums it twice. So it's one, two, three, four, and, and that and is the second string. So four, and then second string. seven chord and it's um thumbs so four two three one four two three just does it once but it's four two three one four two three thumb and thumb and thumb and thumb that's the entire chorus let's put it together with the words I realized I've been calling that part the chorus, but it's it's more the bridge, right? The fish and whistle, whistle and fish. That's probably the bridge. The Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us. That's the chorus. Uh, but it's the same exact guitar part as the verse. But it's still the chorus. So the bridge. What we're doing is the bridge here. The fish, fish and whistle part. So here we are on a D chord. Three, four. Fish and whistle, whistle and fish. G, eat everything they put on your dish. C, when we get through, back to G, we'll make a big wish to the A7 that we never have to do this again. Before we play a nice slow run through, there's a little tag in the song. It happens at two minutes and 24 seconds. It's not really new material. He just kind of simplifies it to give you some variation before that kind of uh, slower finger picked part. And it's a G chord. Same as before, six, two, four, three. Then you go to the D slash F sharp. Six, three, four, open three. And then here he keeps the G really easy. It's just six, four, three, four, all on the downbeats. Here we go, a slow run through the entire thing from the top. Two, three, four. Jump to measure three here, we have, oh sorry, the G. You want that open on the second string to ring out when you put down the next chord. Makes it really cool to have that ringing B over that D slash F sharp. That's definitely happening in the song, so something to be aware of. You don't want that note to fart out when you're putting down this ring finger. And then he does a second ending, or the I guess the third ending, because it repeats three times, and that's measure uh, nine, three, four. Right, G M B. Then the chorus, three, four. somewhere in there and this song's super happy very fun I hope you enjoyed learning this one and that's it that's all I have to say go play it for your friends find a bass player or some guy who can play drums on a bucket and have fun with this one it's really cheery and happy
Thank you, pigeon. What a nice pigeon. I would have overlooked that.